Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss stock dividend. What are stock dividend? What's the big idea? Well, for one thing, we are dealing with dividends. What are dividend? Dividend comes out of retained earnings. What is retained earnings? Well, the company generate revenues. That's what they do for a business. Then they incur expenses. Then what's left is net income, which is same thing as their profit. Now what's going to happen is they're going to park that profit in an account called initially retained earnings and as the name of it they they are retaining they are keeping you are re retaining something and what's that something it's your earning it's your profit and at some point the company might decide to pay out this earnings in dividend to the shareholders and this is what dividend is now in this session we're not talking about cash dividend that was the prior session we're going to talk about stock dividend so rather than giving you cash we're going to reward the shareholders, but we're going to preserve the cash. We're not going to give the cash out. Now, why not? Well, many reasons. One is we may need the cash for internal growth. So simply put, the company will need the cash to invest in R&D, to buy property, plant and equipment, to expand the company, or they may need the cash simply to operate the business. So that's why we don't pay out the cash. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to reduce retained earnings and we're going to increase common stock so simply put we are going to take the retained earnings out but not in cash we're going to replace it with we're not going to give out the cash we're going to take the retained earnings out and increase common stock what is common stock the stockholders ownership so this is the plan so notice in this process we did not affect asset we did not pay out cash so there's no cash involved there's no liabilities involved notice when we paid cash, if you remember, we declared the dividend first, it became a liability. Here, there's no liability. We are under no obligation. We decided to take our retained earning and distribute it in common stock. And there's no effect on total equity. Why not? Because retained earning went down through, then we issued new shares, common stock went up. So the total effect on equity, none. So notice there is no effect on ca ca assets, no effect on liabilities, no effect on equity. So the issue, the new ownership in the proportion of the current ownership. So for example, if the company has in total 10,000 shares and you own 1,000 of those shares, it means you own 10%. Now, if the company decided to issue 5,000 new shares, 5,000 new shares, you will be getting 10% of those. You will be getting 500 shares. So you will receive in proportion of your shares. So this is what it is. So company does not receive anything in return. So when they give you those 500 shares, because you own 10% of the uh, of the company, because you own 10% of the company, well, you're going to keep your current ownership, but you don't give them anything in return. Again, there's no change in total equity, but the structure of the equity changes. Why? Retained earning goes down common stock goes up don't worry we're going to look at an example to see this also we have to differentiate between two types of stock dividends we have small stock dividend and a large stock dividend so what's the difference between the two small stock dividend is when the company issue new stock that are less than 20 to 25 percent of the outstanding stocks let's assume the company will have 100,000 shares outstanding if they issue new they decided to issue new 18000 shares and distribute them 18 distribute them 18000 is of 100000 is 18% that's considered small stock dividend if the company decided to issue 35000 shares well guess what it's more than 20 to 25% what would that make it that would make, that would make it a large now well, you might be asked, what happens if they issue 22%? Don't worry, you don't have to worry about this on the CPA exam, nor in your accounting courses. So what's going to happen is this. If the issue is a new small, if, if, the, if the new stock dividend is a small stock dividend. Now, in the problem, here's the trick that you have to remember. On the CPA exam, in your exam on your exam, the test, uh, the uh, whoever wrote the test, they don't tell you it's a small or a large. They will tell you they issue 18,000 shares. You have to understand 18,000 is 18% 18 out of the to uh, out of the outstanding shares, which is a small. If that's the case, we debit retained earnings. Remember, every time we declare dividend retained earnings, we have this retained earnings will go down. H how much do we bring down retained earnings? We're going to take the 18,000 shares since it's a small times the market value of the stock so we debit retained earnings for the fair value of the stock and this should be given okay now why do we debit the fair value of the stock because the assumption is we issued new and uh, new shares but the, the amount is small it's not going to make any 
change to the stock price. Now, if we issue, if we considered, if we consider the new stock dividend as a large stock dividend, let's assume we're issuing 35,000 new shares. Well, what's going to happen is we're going to debit retained earnings, 18, uh, 35,000. And be careful, this is the difference. This is the main difference, 35,000 times the par value. Obviously, we're going to work an example. I'm just showing you the rules. So the debit here, the debit to retained earning is the number of shares, debit retained earning for the par value of the stock. So the number of shares times the par value, small number of shares times the fair market value. Here we assume that the, the why won't, why don't we use the market share? Because we assume the market share, it's going to be influenced because we're issuing a large number of shares. As a result, the price of the share usually will go down. Now, the best way to illustrate this concept is to take a look at an example. So I'm going to be looking at this company where they have common stock, $10 par value, 20,000 share issued, which give us 200,000 in common stock. The company has 50,000 of additional paid in capital and retained earnings of 450,000. So all in all, we have total equity of 700,000. And this is before we declare any stock dividend. Before we proceed, I would like to remind you whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. Most likely, if you're studying for your exam, you have a CPA review course, and that's great. You keep it. I'm a supplemental tool. I'm a I'm a useful addition to that CPA review course, nor I, nor I replace your accounting course. Uh, my, my motto is saving CPA candidate and accounting students, which I believe they're the same unit, because if you're an accounting student, you really want to be a CPA. One at a time by providing you resources, lectures, detailed lectures, multiple choice, practice exercises to help you succeed. This is a list of my courses that you can, found, you can find on my website, advanced accounting, governmental, managerial, intermediate, basic, tax, so on and so forth. My CPA material are aligned with your Becker, Roger, Wiley, and Gleam. So it's very easy to go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course. I give you access to all previously AI CPA questions with detailed solution. That's 1,500 of them, in addition to thousands of practice questions. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation, like this recording, share it with others, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. The best way to illustrate the concept is to actually work an example. Let's assume Adam Company has 10,000 shares of $1 par value common stock. The board of directors decided to issue 1,000 1000 stock in dividends. So we have 1,000 out of 10,000. That's the first thing you want to take a look at is 10%. This is we are dealing with a small stock dividend. You have to know whether it's a small or large. If it's a small, we need the fair value. The fair value is giving will always be giving $6. Let's start the entry. We're going to debit retained earnings for the number of shares issued times the fair value, which is 1,000 new shares times $6. That's going to give us $6,000. We're going to credit common stock dividend distributable, a new equity account. Common stock, this is going to become common stock. How do we credit common stock? Well, we credit common stock, the number of shares times the par value, which is, I'm sorry, number of shares, which is a thousand new shares times the par value, a thousand. What's left is paid in capital par value common stock, 5,000. And this is the entry that we make on the declaration date. So let's see what's going to happen after the declaration date. After the declaration date, we're going to have a new account on the equity section called common stock dividend distributable. And that's going to give us a thousand dollar. It's going to be a new thousand dollar. Common stock was not affected yet. We did not issue the stock yet. And we have an additional five thousand dollar to additional paid in capital, fifty five thousand. And retained earning went down six. So notice what happened. Retained earning goes down six. Common stock dividend distributable became a thousand and the remaining five thousand went into paid in capital. So what happened to the overall equity? It's still the same, 700,000. So what's going to happen on the distribution date? On the distribution date, we are going to distribute the stock. Therefore, this common stock dividend distributable, we're going to debit this account. Therefore, it's going to be gone. We're going to get rid of this account and we're going to credit regular common stock. Simply put, we're going to take the 200,000 will become 201,000. Basically the same thing. All what we did is we took 6,000 out of retained earnings. So we, we subtracted basically 6,000 out of retained earning. We added 5,000 plus 1,000. And that's all what happened. So all in all, 
total equity is still the same. This is for a small stock dividend. Let's change the scenario and look at a large stock dividend. I already told you it's large, but usually on the exam, they don't tell you this. Adam Company has $1,001 par value common stock. The board of directors decided to issue 4,000 4, new stock dividend. 4,000 divided by 10,000 is 40%. Now I'm dealing 40%. I'm dealing with a large stock dividend. So notice they gave you the fair value. I give you the fair value to confuse you. So you have to be careful. Don't say, well, I was giving the fair value. I was confused. Be careful. It's a, it's a large. For a large stock dividend, we are going to debit retained earnings for the number of shares times the times the par value, $4,000. We credit common stock dividend to be distributed, $4,000. Notice, we don't have paid in capital. Why not? Because we're issuing the shares at par. So we don't have any additional par value. So this is on the declaration date. And notice what happened. All what we did is we reduced retained earning by $4,000. It went to common stock dividend distributable for now. So retained earnings went down, common stock dividend distributable went up, equity is still the same. On the distribution date, we're going to get rid of this number because we're going to issue the stock. We're going to get rid of it and add it to common stock. Now we have common stock 204,000. Well, let's take a look at our equity again. All what we did is we took 4,000. This went down by 4,000. This went up by 4,000 because these two accounts cancel each other out. And this is a large stock dividend. What should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com and work multiple choice questions and look at additional resources. At the end of this recording, I'm going to remind you, if you are an accounting student, invest in yourself, invest in your career, especially if you're a CPA candidate. Don't shortchange yourself. My subscription will give you additional information that's going to help you with your CPA review course, which will help you on your exam. Don't shortchange, don't shortchange yourself. The CPA exam is worth it. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.